Would you all please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Chuck Jones. I'm the pastor here at Coast Community Church. It's my honor to pastor here. And Miss Helen Norris was such a sweet, sweet, dear friend to this church. Member for a long, long time, so faithful. And on behalf of the family, I just want to thank you all for being here today in support of them. In the days to come, it's going to be difficult. And so I know, I know that you'll all stand behind them and help them and be a blessing to them. And that's what they need during this time. The separation is difficult. It's hard. But I thank God that we have the Lord Jesus Christ and his promise that one day we'll see Miss Helen again if we know him. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a, a, an opening song. Ashley and Emily.
has to tell me to be, has to tell me to show the use is, and I may not be here for Saturday. Thank y'all so much. About our mother. We call her mama, grandchildren, and great grandchildren call her grandma. I hope what I share will help provide you with some insight into her life where we live. I know as many of you knew her, but there were some here today that may not know her, so I hope what I can say can help that situation. Helen Marie Sears was born November 6, 1935 to William Roy Sears and A. Cobb Sears. She was a big sister to her brother Carly Sears, who predeceased her. Those in her generation were significantly impacted by the Great Depression of the 1930s and World War II in the early 1940s. At that time, most families struggled to get by. Poverty caused by the Great Depression and shortage and rationing rationing caused by World War II. What people lacked in material possessions and wealth, they made up for with love, friendship, and looking out for one another. That's how a lot of the families were able to make it through those difficult times. Growing up during this period of time impacted the way Mama lived her life. Some of you in here may be the same way. Don't be wasted. Don't throw anything away. You may need it someday. Any of y'all had that? <laughs> that is a generational trait for those that lived through those times. Her early childhood, childhood years were spent in a small tenant farmhouse on Navitor Road. As many children did during that time, she grew up helping in the tobacco and cotton fields. She made it very clear to us in later years that she hated picking cotton. <laughs> Their house was typical for houses during that era. No electricity, no running water, no indoor plumbing, or bathrooms. Though it may have had central air, that being, when the wind blew under the house, it probably came up through the cracks in the floor. <laughs> I remember her talking about some of her childhood friends. And she called her Leela Ruth Up Church, Glenda Pope Denny, Mel McClay. Miss Ruth, if I had known when she kept talking about Leela Ruth that she was talking about you, I would have paid a lot more attention. <laughs> It took me several years before I figured out who she was talking about. Later, the family moved to a house in Coates where she spent the remainder of her childhood and her teenage years. This is the house she lived in since 1977 up until uh, this past Sunday when she passed. Some of the stories she shared with us over the years. One of the ones was, and we've heard this before, about walking to school every day with her friend. We've always, always heard people talking about walking to school, having to walk through the snow and the mud. Well, her story was walking to school through on the, excuse me, on the railroad tracks. Neither of her parents ever had driver's licenses or a car. So their means of pass, transportation was Pat and Charlie. Well, those that may not understand it, that means they walk wherever they went. She told me of one day walking to school, and her friend, and I think it was uh, Shelby Jean Godwin, I, I think that's what Miss Ruth, is that correct? Uh, was probably the friend. And as they were walking to school on the railroad tracks, a, a menacing dog approached them. And they were scared they were going to be bit. So her friend jumped into my mother's arms so she wouldn't get bit. <laughs> Guess what? My mother got bit. <laughs> so when she got to school, they had to take her to the uh, doctor. She was a good student in school. She loved school, had good grades, and she really enjoyed that. 
But one day, the basketball coach, Mr. Coon, he was the girls' basketball coach and coached school at the time, approached her and told her, with her height, she ought to be playing basketball. Well, this really excited Mom. She was, she was really wanting to play basketball. So she went home to talk to her father. Her father said, absolutely not. No daughter of mine is going to be on the basketball court wearing those shorts. <laughs> she eventually got him to agree to let her mother decide. And she went and talked to her mother, and her mother said, it'll be okay. She always shared that the time she spent playing basketball was one of her fondest memories and high point of her school years. In 1954, she was working as a cashier at the grocery store owned by Earl and uh, Berlin Miss Beanie Ennis. She worked there for a number of years. I was just talking to Mr. Keith a while ago about uh, how Mr. Keith worked there for a while. Mr. Earl and Miss Beanie were like second parents to her. She maintained a lifelong friendship with those folks. But I tell you that because in 1954, October of 1954, she told us she was working at the store and someone came in and said everyone needed to go home. There was a hurricane coming, Hurricane Hazel, and everyone needed to get home. But no one had ever experienced a hurricane before. They didn't know what was going to happen. They had no idea. But they all went home. Someone took my mother home. The storm came in in the middle of the day. It was quick. A lot of wind, a lot of damage, trees down, windows broken, no electricity. But it happened quickly. And she told me she went back to the store that afternoon, but with no electricity, anyone that came in to buy anything, they had to do it on paper. They had to go back to the old school way of doing it. As many, dear, 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 as many did during that time, she got married after high school. She moved into a wooden frame, wooden frame farmhouse on my grandfather's farm. It was the mid-1950s. Modern conveniences were still a long way off. They were a thing of the future. I remember Mama milking the cow each day for our meal. And when she was going to have cooked fried chicken, she didn't go to the IGA for the chicken. She loved to cook and everyone loved to eat her cooking. She developed a reputation among the children and grandchildren for her chicken pastry, her seafoam candy, her haystacks, her fudge, and 10 layer chocolate cake. That was one of her specialties. There's a story that I've heard several times and it's going around about one of the grandsons. Not gonna call any names, John Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> but the story is that John Ferguson refused to eat one of her 10 layer, one of her chocolate cakes because it only had nine layers. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I couldn't resist that job. Later in life, she married Charles Norris, and they spent many wonderful and happy years together. They had a motor home, and they were forever going places. They went from the mountains of North Carolina to the beaches of North Carolina. They went to other states. They had a great time with the camp. That was something they really enjoyed. It was during their marriage that Charles and Mama joined a motorcycle game. <laughs> Can you imagine talking to someone and telling them that your mother was part of a motorcycle game? <laughs> well, let me explain. The game 
was the Legion Riders, part of the American Legion, opposed to Benson. They have a, a group of people who ride their motorcycles. As a matter of fact, the gentleman came through the line box and said he used to ride motorcycles with, with uh, Mr. Charles and, and Mama. They really enjoyed the friendship, the fellowship they had with this group. It was a blessing to them to have that group of people. But on the motorcycles, once they decided that they were going to take a trip with the group, and they took off on a motorcycle trip to the mountains. This was kind of out of character for my mother. And we were all kind of shocked. Several days on a trip on a motorcycle to the mountains. No car, just on a motorcycle. Mama had a tendency to get a little car sick sometimes. And she got real sick when they went up one of the mountains. And she told me they went up a mountain that had switchback roads to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. That, I mean, it was continuous up to the mountain. She said when she got to the mountain, she was sick. When she got home, the only comment she had to make was, never again. <laughs> but they did enjoy riding motorcycles. I just don't think she went back to the mountains. I mentioned walking earlier. And for many years, as their health allowed, you may have seen Mama and Ruth Upchurch walking in town. Every morning they would get together and walk. And those ladies could walk. Matter of fact, my wife Bonnie joined them for a few times. She was 20 plus years younger. She couldn't keep up. She <laughs> gave it up. I also mentioned earlier that she worked at Mr. Earl's grocery store. She also worked for many years at Terry Hill Manufacturing until it closed. Following that, she worked in the food service at Cameron University mainly in the Oasis Grill. Anybody who knows anything about Campbell knows about the Oasis. The Oasis is a place on campus that you can get short order cook, short order items, such as hamburgers, hot dogs, and sandwiches. At all of these places, she made many, many friends and met many people. I believe one of the reasons that she loved going to Walmart, besides her love for shopping, was because at Walmart, whenever she went, she was going to see someone that she, from the past, that she either had been at Terry Hill, made friends with, or at the Oasis in Canada. She was going to always see somebody. Walmart's a gathering place for our community. If you don't leave it, you go there on, on any day, and you'll see somebody that you know. It was a weekly, if not twice weekly, event for her to go to Walmart. Each time my sisters would take her, there again, they would take her once a week or twice a week because she loved to go. They would say, she would, she would tell them, well, I really don't need anything, but we'll go. I, I don't know. If I'm going to ever get to come back, so while I'm here, I'd better go on and get something. <laughs> and I believe Karen shared with me that one of the things she would say was, I see something, I better buy it because it might not happen when I come back next time. <laughs> <laughs> there again, go back to the generational thing of when she grew up. That mindset was still part of her DNA, a part of what, when you, when you do those things, worry about if it's going to be there the next time or if you're going to have a chance to do it again. That comes from where you grew up at. One of the great joys of her life was her family time. Birthdays, weddings, special occasions, any time the family could get together. And one of the things I can guarantee you, if you sit down next to her, it won't be but a few minutes before she would be telling you about her grandchildren and great-grandchildren.
that's in there. But sometimes, as being a grandparent, uh, the children was what you, the price you had to pay to get grandchildren. <laughs> Some other things she really loved. Going out to eat and shopping with friends. There are a number of friends. Some that come to mind, so there's some others I don't know, and if, I, and if they are, I apologize for not including names. But Miss Ruth, Miss Margie, Diane, and others, uh, thank you so much for taking her and spending time. Bojangles. KFC, Taco Bell, Western Season, they were some of her favorite restaurants. If you went into one of these restaurants, especially during the middle of the day, you were happy to see it because she loved going to those places. When she was home, she enjoyed doing word seeing puzzles or books to kept her mind occupied. I didn't know until talking to my sister Sheila yesterday that there's a difference between word seek and word search. I don't know what it is, but she didn't like word search. She wanted word seek. What she said, Sheila. Up until the last few months when her health began to fail her, she was always ready to hear the magic words. Let's go. Didn't matter where, let's go. She was ready to go. That was something that kept her occupied and kept her mind and her body would go. She just, she wanted to go. She enjoyed going. She lived a good, full life. Isn't that what we all hope for? To have a good, full life. In closing, there is one final thing I need to mention. As good as she was, she was not perfect. She had one flaw that I could never understand. Whenever my sisters and I would be fussing, arguing, fighting, as siblings do, she would holler, Randy! <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want some 10 layer chocolate cake. <laughs> I think Miss Helen, you know, right now is looking down on this crowd, and she's so proud of her family. I can honestly say every time I met with her, my wife and I would go and visit her and sit in the room with her in the front room there, and, and all she wanted to talk about was her family and how great her family was, and we enjoyed hearing that. She's a wonderful lady, so faithful. She couldn't be here in the church. She was online watching us. And uh, we're definitely going to miss her. She sat right there on that row. I can, I'll can i never forget her being there. But I think today, um, special times like this, God rolls the clouds away. And he allows those that have departed to look down on us. And I think she's very proud of her family today. And um, Ashley and Emily, I thought two angels joined us up here on the stage. You did an excellent job. And uh, you can sing in my church anytime you want to. Amen. The door is always open. And, and Brother Randy, you did an awesome job. What what a way to honor, you know, that their dear, sweet lady mama, you know. Uh, it's just, um, I was so proud of you, and I know she is too. And uh, she loves her family. And I uh, want to share something with you uh, this morning. It's a poem that was written by Miss Sheila. And, uh, and she asked me if I would read this to you folks, and I'm going to do the very best I can. But she, she, she titled this, Poem for Mama. As we take a moment to reflect on the past, we remember so many good times that outweighed the pain we knew would not last. On Sunday morning, when you breathed for the last time, there was such a peace knowing you received your wings from the divine, great divine. We gathered around your table bar to reminisce about the good and the bad times we had. We laughed and rejoiced while trying our best not to be sad. 
We know in our hearts that God carried you away in his arms to a home we long to see one day. We love you with all of our hearts. Please continue to watch over all of us. As you always have, we pray. And that's his devotion in the shield. I'm sure she loved that very, very much. great joys of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ is it, it can be well with our soul, which was the song that was just played even when we lose someone, because we know that Miss Helen knew the Lord Jesus Christ, and we know that she's in heaven right now, and she's looking down on these proceedings, and she's pleased. She's proud of all of you. I wanted to bring you a message today. I, as I said, and I, and I thought about Miss Helen, and, and um, just thought about some of the things that we shared, the times we shared. She loved this church, she loved me, and I loved her. And uh, she was such a sweet person. And as I thought, what kind of message I want to bring, I, I decided I really wanted to bring you a message of celebration and not one of sorrow. Because I know Miss Helen would want it that way. She wouldn't want us to sit here in sorrow over her. She would want us to celebrate her life. You know, while it's true that her broken body lies here in state this morning, I want to assure you that this is not the end of this sweet saint. Her body is here, but her soul and her spirit are with the Lord. The Bible teaches that our soul and our spirit are alive and well with the Lord Jesus Christ when we leave this body. And that's why we can celebrate today. Because for the Christian, there is no end. It's eternal life forever with the Lord Jesus. Death has no power over the children of God, and the grave has no victory. And we praise Jesus for this. Miss Helen is seeing and experiencing things too great for us to even imagine at this current time she's experiencing these things. Heaven's a, a place of total peace, community, perfect love, and worship to our great God. Can you imagine folks being there? Miss Helen has looked into the face of Almighty God. She has seen God face to face. She's re reunited with all the loved ones that have gone on before her. She's experiencing right now the wonder and the splendor of heaven. She has a new body that's perfect and young and healthy, and she'll never experience sorrow or hurting again. All those former things have passed away for her, and she has nothing but joy in her heart, and I rejoice in that today. So in the days to come, don't think of her being at the graveyard, because that's where her broken body is, but her, her soul and her spirit is in heaven with Jesus, and she is fine. The Apostle Paul wrote, and he said, We are confident, I say, and willing rather, listen, to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. Those are the, that's God's promise for all of his children. That's from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. That promise is from God, who never breaks his word. Miss Ellen is in, Lord, is in the Lord's hands in heaven, and she's safe and sound, and eternal life for her has just begun. When she closed her eyes in death, she opened her eyes in glory. What an incredible moment. I almost envy her 
to think of all the things that she's experiencing right now that, that my heart longs for, but there's still work to do here. You know, when describing heaven, the apostle John, who was taken there, they don't know him body or spirit, but he, he, he saw the heavenlies, and he tried to describe it as best he could, and he wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor either entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. It's a simple verse, but there's so much meaning in this verse. It talks about what heaven's like. John's trying to explain to us with our finite minds what he experienced when he entered into the heavenlies. He said, my eyes have never seen anything like it. It's greater than anything I've ever seen. My ears have never heard anything so beautiful as what I experienced there in heaven. And I, even with my imagination, I could have never dreamed what heaven was truly like. And I just rejoice in my heart knowing that Miss Helen is there now. And those are the things that she's experiencing. Amen? It's an incredible thing. It's just impossible with these finite minds to, to understand the incredible glory that exists in heaven. What Miss Helen is experiencing right now and hopefully where we'll all go at the end, end of our lives. You know, it's for certain that none of us are getting out of this alive, amen? No one. We're all going to face death. We're all going to be in this position one day. And so I want to speak to you about that today. When she, when she drew her last breath here in this life, the Bible teaches that the angels of God came and picked her and ministered to her and took her away to heaven. That's what happens with the child of God. And I've been in places where people have passed. I've had actually people tell me, Pastor, do you see the angel? And I say, no, it's the angel's calling for me to go home and then pass away right then. That's the experience for those that, that love Jesus and know him as Savior. The Lord's waiting for us. Certain that none of us are going to get out of this, of this world of a lot alive. We're all going to face death, and we're all going to end up in the same place. And I want you to think about that today. I mean, where are you going to spend eternity? Folks, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Because if you don't, I hope you'll make a decision for Christ today that you'll be able to see Miss, Miss Helen again. Do you know for sure that you'll be there when your time comes? Miss Helen is, he is in heaven today because a certain day came in her life where she heard the truth of God's word preached and she responded in faith. That's the step that must be taken in this life. Once you're dead, it's too, it's too late. You have to choose the Lord now in this life. That's why we're here. And that day that she heard the gospel preached, she responded. And Jesus wrote her name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the Holy Spirit took up residence in her heart. And forever she's going to be with the Lord because of this choice that she made. It's a decision that we must all make in this life. And I know this because I know Miss Helen. If she had the ability to be here with us today, if she could leave the heavenlies and come and stand next to me, I think she would look at me, put her hand on my arm, and she would say this, please, Pastor, tell my loved ones and my friends how they can join me one day in heaven. I know that's what she would tell me. I know it. There's no doubt. She would tell me to give them the truth of God's word during her funeral. And friends, that's exactly what I intend to do today. Because she wants you to come to that place where she is now. And the decision must be made in this life. And I think she'd have a message for all of you too. If she, can, if she could be here today. She would say, listen closely. Open up your hearts to the truth of God's word. Receive the love and forgiveness that only comes through the, the Lord Jesus Christ. God's only son. See, when Jesus was here on this earth walking. He spoke to his, his, his disciples, the apostles, about how a man can spend eternity with God. He explained to them how this could happen. And he gave them promises that apply to us as well today. They were promises for them at their time, but they, they, they apply to us as well. He knew his time was short, and very soon he would be going to the cross to pay for the sins of the world. And, of course, this troubled the disciples. They didn't want Jesus to leave, to leave. They understood what separation was. They understood what death was. But they didn't understand what Jesus was about yet. They would learn. It troubled the disciples greatly when he said he was going to leave. 
And these are his words that he gave to his disciples. And I wanted you to hear them today. They're found in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, some of my favorite verses in the Bible. The Bible says, Jesus speaking to his disciples and speaking to all of our hearts here today, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He's speaking of heaven. Verse number four says, And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And one of his disciples, Thomas, doubting Thomas, said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus gave a response that is so powerful, so important to each and every one of us, and it's this. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is telling us all, I'm the only way. Man could try many different ways today to be able to make it into heaven. But friends, Jesus just told us in his word that he is the only way. And this is so important to understand. Please, folks, open up your heart to the truth of God's word today that I'm going to share, share uh, with you. What did Jesus mean when he said he was the only way to heaven? This is the most important message some of you may ever hear in your life. It's the most important decision you can ever make in your life. It's a decision that Miss Helen made. And because of that decision, she's in heaven with Jesus today. Simply put, Jesus came to make a way for us to be forgiven of our wrongdoing or of our sins. Sin is simply when we disobey God, and we all have done that. Our sins separate, separate us from a holy and a righteous God because sin cannot exist in his presence. Miss Helen is there, and she's sinless because of the shed blood of Jesus. Sin will be judged, listen to me, and it will be punished because God is righteous and he always does the right thing. That's not the popular message for today, friends, but it's the message that must be preached because it is true. And we need to hear the truth today. <coughs> Please allow me to share just a few scriptures from the Bible and explain how we can be forgiven and blessed forever. How our names could be written on that roll and how we can be in heaven with Miss Heaven and with Miss Helen one day. See, God has a path to his side in eternity. And I want to explain to you that path today. I want you to understand that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's not one person in this room, there's not one person who's ever walked on this earth short of the Lord Jesus Christ that has not sinned against God. And while mankind doesn't think sin is a big deal, God thinks it's a big deal. One bite of the forbidden fruit sent this entire world into chaos. Just one sin. And the Bible says we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. And this is why we need a Savior. This is why we need someone to come and pay the penalty that we cannot. You know, some people today, they believe they're, going to, they're good people. They're going to they go to heaven because they're good people. But if you think about the verse that I just read to you, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. We understand that we're, there's a great separation between God and us. And Jesus, his son, came to fix it. But so many people today believe they're going to get to heaven because they're good people. But friends... There's no one that's good. Only God is good. We have a sin nature inside of us that's passed down from generation to generation to generation. And it causes us to sin. And that separates us and will separate us eternally from God unless it's taken care of according to the method that Jesus, that Jesus prescribed to us. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done good deeds, but according to his mercy, he saves us. It's God's mercy, his unmerited favor that God displays to us. Why? Because God loves you. Because God loves me. Because God loved Miss Helen. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. Take the, that word world out and plug your name in there. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Friends, I want you to have everlasting life. God wants you to have everlasting life. Miss Helen wants you to have everlasting life. And you can find it today in the scriptures. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But it means much more than to just simply believe that he existed. There was a purpose for him coming. He came to pay the penalty for our sins. He's the son of God. He's always existed. And God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Spirit work together to come up with a plan that would relieve us of our sins, make us cleanse white as snow that we could stand in his presence one day. And it all happened through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus left the glories of heaven and he came to this earth, humbly born as a baby. He was 100% God and 100% man. And he walked on this earth for 33 and a half years. And he was tried and he was tempted, just like all of us are. But the difference is, he never sinned, not one time. He was God. And at the end of his life, he shined light into the darkness. And mankind hated him for that. Because they loved their sin. They wanted nothing to do with God. And they took the king of kings. Jesus allowed it, and they gave him false trials, and they beat him, mocked him, jeered and sneered at him, humiliated him, shamed him. They plucked his beard. They beat him in the face until he was unrecognizable. They took a, a whip and beat him across his back until blood was flowing everywhere. They did all manner of evil against the Son of God. And listen to me, friends. It was the love for you that kept him on the path to the cross. Because he could have easily spoken the word. And all of those men would have been destroyed. The son of God. But that was God's plan. For him to suffer and bleed and die on that cross. And give his life a ransom for you and for me. To pay the penalty for our sins. Miss Helen knew that. This is the message long ago that was preached to her that she heard. She wants you to hear this message today, and God wants you to hear this message today, because we all must make a decision to follow Christ or to reject him in this life. Once you die, it's too late to make a decision for God. It must be done in this life. And so they took Jesus. After they had beat him, spit on him, treated him horribly, put a cross beam on his back, carried, made him carry it through the, the, through the streets of the town, and they laid him down on it, and they drove spikes through his wrist and through his feet. The Son of God! And they hung him up. And he looked down on him, and he cried out to the Father, Father, please forgive them, for they know not what they do. What great love. Jesus knew he had to shed his blood, because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. This is what the Bible teaches. A blood sacrifice is required, a perfect sacrifice, and none of us can offer that. Because we all are sin, sinners. We're sin laden. And so Jesus took our place. And he hung on that cross. And when his time has come, he looked up into the heavenlies and he said, Father, it is finished. And he gave up his life. No one took it from him. He gave it for you and for me and for Miss Helen. And he took down the Lord's broken body. And they put him in a borrowed tomb. But you can't keep Jesus down. He's almighty God. And he rose up by the power of the Holy Spirit. On the third day, he rose up. A stone was rolled away. And King Jesus walked out of that tomb. And he got the victory over death and hell. And he's offering it to all of us. This is what it means when it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And so I presented to you all that you need to know about Jesus and the gospel and how we can be forgiven of our sins. And it's something that must happen in this life. For by grace are you saved through faith. And it's not, of your, it's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So how do we accept this gift? God says, I have a gift for you. It's my son. He died on the cross for you. And I'm offering this gift to anybody who's willing to take it out of my hand. And you say, well, how do I, how do, I do that, Pastor? How do I... How do I experience this, this gift of salvation? How do I take hold on that? How, how are my sins washed away? How, how can I be provided for a place in heaven? The Bible has the answer. 
It says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In Romans 10, 9. In Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, For whosoever, I'm looking at a room full of whosoever, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so all, of, and, and all that has to be done to secure your place in heaven, and that's the only way you're going to see Miss Helen again, is to get right with Jesus, to get right with our God. And we do that through a, a childlike prayer, a prayer of faith. God wants us to believe the testimony that his son came and shed his blood and died and rose again to pay the penalty for our sins. And he's offering salvation to anybody who will take it. And the way that we receive it is through prayer. Trusting him and just saying a simple prayer to God and asking him to save us. And if you will do that today, right where you're sitting, I'm telling you, Jesus will hear your prayer, and he will wipe out every sin that you ever committed in your life and all the ones you're going to commit in your life. They'll all be destroyed, and you'll be in heaven one day because of a decision that you make here in this church this day. I hope you'll make that choice. This is a dangerous world. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. None of us are promised another day. So I pray that you'll get it right. Can I ask everyone to please bow your heads for just a moment? If you're here today and you've heard this gospel that I've preached and it has spoken to your heart, praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is at work in this place. I feel his presence. If you're here and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, it's so simple. You don't even have to say this prayer out loud, but I want to ask you to say this prayer to Jesus so that your sins can be erased. He paid the penalty, but you have to ask him in order to be saved. If that's you, right where you are, I'm going to lead you in prayer. And I would encourage you to say in your heart to Jesus this prayer. Receive Jesus today. All you need to say is this. Follow me in prayer if this is your desire. Just say, Dear Jesus. I confess that I am a sinner, and I do believe that you died for me to pay for my sins. And the best I know how, I trust you now, and I receive you by faith. Friends, if you're here today and you just said that prayer, this pastor would love to pray for you. Would you keep your heads bowed, please? No one looking around. This is a solemn time. But if you're here today and you said that prayer, I want to pray for you. And I want to ask God's blessing upon you. But I can't do that unless you show me who you are. And I'm going to ask you to be very courageous and bold in just a moment. I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up to show that you prayed that prayer. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Be strong. Be brave. Be courageous. I promise you I'm not going to come to you, point you out, or embarrass you in any way. All I want to do is pray for you. If you said that prayer today and you meant it in your heart, would you slip your hand up right now so I can pray for you? Just slip it up. I see your hands. Honey. One, two, three, four. Are there others? Others? I said that prayer, Pastor. I meant it in my heart. Slip your hand up and put it right back down. All I want to do is pray for you. I tell you something. The Bible teaches that there's joy in the presence of angels over one sinner that repents. Just one sinner. It doesn't say that the angels rejoice. It says they're the ones in the presence of the angels. That's talking about Miss Helen. She's looking down, and she's seeing this. Last call. You said that prayer, and you meant it. Would you slip your hand up so I can pray for you? Just slip it up. I see your hand now. Amen. Father, thank you, God, for the truth and the power of your word. You're so excellent, God. I just thank you for who you are. I thank you, Lord, for your, your love and your kindness salvation through your son Jesus I'm so glad that Miss Helen is with you and she's safe and sound and Lord thank you for her family bless them in the coming days Lord I know many tears will fall as they think of memories of her I pray that you'll bless them and show them mercy and grace give them the peace that passes all understanding and be with them and help them God because you're our only hope we need you in all things we love you and we praise you in Jesus name